Well, I have to, uh, I have to be very candid. I'm not sure my, my uh, candidate has made a specific statement on that issue, but on the more general issue about human rights. Look, this is somebody who well knows what authoritarian regimes can do with, with information if they're so inclined to, to punish people. This is somebody who spent time in a prisoner of war camp in a communist country against his will. So he is uh, every, uh, in, in, to his very fiber, understands um, that there are dangers and risks associated uh, with that kind of behavior. Um, I, I think uh, he would want to take the kind of approach where you work with the American business community. We have an expanding trade relationship with China. Mike's exactly right. It's our fastest growing export market. We are in this market. We are interdependent. But we do need to work with American companies uh, and talk to them. Uh, perhaps it needs to be behind closed doors about some of their practices. Obama Biden. Well, I, I think uh, that uh, Senator Obama hasn't taken a clear position on a particular company. Uh, and in that sense, is uh, in the same position I would understand Senator McCain to be in. But, I think there'd be a couple of principles that would probably be applied in this class of cases. Certainly one is, uh, you know, we're going to observe U.S. law, so that'd be an issue of whether or not it was violated. Uh, on the, and I think the second thing would be that this is really a rather distasteful policy that we would uh, uh, do our best to discourage uh, uh, within the framework of what's permissible. We'll take another question over there. Eric McVeigh in the Institute for Foreign Policy Analysis. This afternoon I was in a session with the U.S. Ambassador to Zimbabwe, uh, Ambassador McGee. I asked him what China was doing there, and he said, uh, a bit smugly, um, they're playing it very close to the chest. We decided on the word inscrutable as appropriate. But um, I, my question, more generally, uh, with the things that China is doing in Africa, becoming much more active, what will be the policy of your administration toward China and Africa? Uh, will we try to shape them, ignore them? Uh, are there some brilliant ways we should be handling it? Obama, Biden. Um, I believe that our, our general orientation, as, as much of the orientation I've described this evening, is to try to uh, enhance the positive and reduce the negative. Uh, and what do I mean by that? The World Bank just came out with a study looking at the economic net, economic effect in uh, sub-Saharan Africa of, of, of Chinese investment and economic behavior, uh, and basically came to the, uh, the conclusion that it's net positive for Africa. And certainly, I think an Obama administration wants to encourage everybody that has the resources, interests, and capabilities to help develop Africa to do so. And China is one of the biggest uh, players, and we would want to uh, encourage the positive aspects on that. On the other hand, uh, some of this, the forms of investment and some of the behaviors is sort of a, a race to the bottom in terms of international human rights standards and so on, and we would want to dis do the best we could uh, discourage this. Also, in some areas, uh, we would be quite pleased. China is ha the, uh, among the um, uh, permanent members of the uh, UN Security Council, has more peacekeepers abroad than any of the other members, and we would certainly want to encourage that. So I think it's this, this search for balance where we disagree, articulate that in a powerful way, where we find it constructive, encourage more of it. McCain Palin. Uh, thanks for the question, Admiral. I think um, this is another area where you've got to think about all the players that are involved. It's certainly true that China is expanding uh, its presence and its activities all across the globe. Uh, but it's, it's oftentimes for, forgotten that we are the largest contributor to uh, foreign aid overseas developments in terms of gross dollars, not in terms of percentage of GDP. We're number one. Japan is number two. And so when you look at actual contributions and you look at actual footprint in places, there's a lot uh, we can do if we coordinate and we work with our closest allies and friends. And I think, you know, again, there are people who want to talk about McCain's position in terms of strengthening and building alliances only in military terms, but he certainly means it in much more comprehensive terms. I think the coordination of overseas development assistance is a great example of where the two largest contributors of overseas development assistance, Japan and the United States, can work together. Now, I would, and, and I, I think a McCain administration would very much welcome uh, uh, working with China to ensure that their participation in, in, in these areas is constructive. And I think that's an opportunity. I think um, uh, we have uh, a window of time to work with them to try to ensure that they understand 
uh, the potential consequences of, of their behavior as well as the potential opportunities if they work alongside us and other countries who want to use development assistance for the betterment of the people in these regions. Uh, we can take another question but over, over there. Hi, uh, I'm Chris Knudsen with Deloitte's uh, Chinese Services Group. I didn't hear either of you say a whole lot about the uh, strategic economic dialogue. Uh, and my questions, I guess, are very simple then. Um, do your candidates uh, view it as having been valuable? Will they continue it? Uh, and if so, uh, will they make changes to it? Uh, and then lastly, and I think probably most importantly, uh, who's going to champion it? Because uh, one of the concerns I think that, uh, that we talk about uh, is that the, the folks that really champion the economic you know, relationship are kind of departing the scene a, a bit. We've got Paulson who won't be there next year. You know, Wu Yi has now uh, left her post. The folks that were there 10 years ago, I think a lot of us in the business community look to as the champions are, are, uh, are not there. So who from both of your uh, camps will be there to champion, uh, if not the SCD, uh, a dialogue uh, much like it? Thank you for your question. Um, we'll go to McCain Palin first. Well, uh, Senator McCain has not taken a position on whether to sustain this specific dialogue. Uh, he has, however, said that it should be judged on the results it produces. And I think uh, one of the things I would commend Secretary Paulson and his team on is their interest in reaching out to both campaigns, which they've done, and their uh, interest in uh, meeting with the transition team after the next round of the strategic economic dialogue. Uh, hopefully that will be a McCain transition team. And uh, briefing the incoming administration on uh, the results of the SED. I, I would assume if it's uh, producing concrete results, either president, I, I, sh I guess I shouldn't speak for the other side, uh, Senator McCain would be inclined to keep it. But it, it does need to produce results. You don't send seven cabinet secretaries to a country and come back empty-handed. This is uh, something that we need to pay attention to uh, in, in terms of how we approach the Chinese in trying to optimize our, our uh, position for, for getting results. Who would be in charge of the, uh, the championing the economic relationship, the trade relationship in the McCain administration? President McCain. He's been a champion of this relationship. He supported PNTR. He supported WTO entry. Uh, he understands that this is an important relationship. If it's not the SED, I guarantee you in a McCain administration there would be a flagship dialogue to promote these issues because he understands the importance of it. Obama, Biden, your response? Well, well I think in all candor, of course, uh, that's a level of detail as to which departments and who might champion a dialogue, and there's been no decision on that. But I would say the, the, the inclination, just the sort of method of thought and analysis that I can see would uh, incline heavily towards, if not that, managed by the Treasury Department. Maybe the economic, foreign economic policy making to be organized a bit differently, but there will be a locus for economic, high level economic interaction and discussion with China within the, in an Obama administration, I'm sure. Uh, I would add, though, that it's not only important to talk with the Chinese at a very high level about the economic dimension of the relationship, but there's also been uh, Secretary Negroponte and before him Secretary uh, Zelik, uh, uh, in a, a which they might call the st a strategic and uh, diplomatic uh, dimension to the dialogue, and, and we believe that's equally important. So it's not just an economic uh, dialogue, and conceivably they could be put together, or there are many ways it could be configured, but there will be high level uh, a dialogue there. I'd point out to one very big difference, though, and this gets to the, my initial point about policy making. Uh, I think there is going to be, you know, the, the characteristic of the Bush administration was really you had a, a vice president's office with its own national security staff and you had what you might call the duly constituted National Security Council. And there was a kind of bifurcation of policy. I think there's going to be a lot more attention to having a, a sort of consistent, clear chain of command so that the president can be in charge without being consumed with this process and sorting out continual uh, you know, battles between two parallel lines that only meet in the president's office. So uh, I think that this is going to be an area where the structure of the policy making system in the Obama is going to be a, a, a thousand percent improvement on, in this issue area over uh, certainly the Bush administration. And while the uh, McCain administration or the McCain group hasn't certainly resolved all these questions, you see that same division of opinion and personality. And it's going to be very hard for uh, Randy, if he's in the administration, uh, to in fact, I think, make coherent policy. Well, let's move on to the next question um, over there. 